In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. In the Quranic chapter, Hud, the Lord has told us stories of numerous prophets, out of which the story of Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Lut is very important, given the fact that the homosexuality is rising nowadays. It is said that in early 90s, it used to be considered as a crime and used to be linked with psychological disorder. But due to the high number of people having this psychological disorder, it became legal in most of the countries. This is the main difference between the law of God and the law of human beings. The God does not get inspired or influenced by anyone's feelings. No one can benefit the God and no one can harm the God in any way. When the God makes a law, he makes it to benefit people. However, when the human beings make the law, they find their own interest in it first. This is why if the lawmakers are corrupt, they cannot make the law against the corruption, because they know that they might be caught and punished then. This is why the law of God is high above and beyond these kind of needs and wants. When the prophet Ibrahim was thrown into the fire and the Lord saved him, he decided to leave that area and migrate somewhere else. He realized that it will not be possible to practice his religion if he will continue to stay there. The scholar says that if you live in an area where it is difficult for you to follow Islam, then you should migrate to somewhere else. Prophet Ibrahim did the same. Though he was old but he sacrificed for the Lord. The God says in the Quran, our few messengers came to Ibrahim with the good news. They came in a shape of young men when they delivered the good news to Prophet Ibrahim. Prophet Ibrahim greeted them with a salam. They answered, and as soon as they sat down inside the house, they were served with a roasted beef. This is called a real hospitality of the guests. Due to the fact that Prophet Ibrahim was extremely hospitable, this also shows that beef is healthy. One should eat it, if not allergic to it, or have some medical conditions where he should avoid it. It is important to keep three things in mind at this point. Roasted beef is very irresistible. No matter how much you have eaten already, when this sort of dish is presented, one is bound to taste it at least, if not eat it. Secondly, in the honor of the guest. One is bound to at least taste it, whatever is served. Lastly, these messengers were travelers. They were not from that area. So, these three things should have been the reason to finish up the whole roasted calf. When Prophet Ibrahim saw that they are not even tasting it, he got scared of them. He felt fear in his heart. The scholars narrated that the fear was due to the fact that it was a tradition at that time that if someone would eat in the person's house, they would not be an enemy of that person. And if they would be an enemy, then they would not eat in that person's house. Unfortunately, this sort of pudency is not there anymore in the society. So that was the reason why Prophet Ibrahim had a fear in his heart. When he saw them not eating, he thought that they will harm him. One more important lesson from this story is that even the most pious people can get scared of the things. Fear is a natural thing. In the Battle of Kandak, when the enemies attacked from all the four sides, the Quran says the Lord helped you when you felt that your heart is going to burst out from your chest. This is a reason the God forgives the sins of a person who fights in the name of God. Those were the feelings of the companions of the Prophet. Though there is an enormous fear of pullets and tanks, but the person stands firm and fight for the God. If there would be no fear then, there would be no sacrifice to fight in the name of God. And in the battle of Kandak, the companions of the prophet started to have strange suspicion that if the God promise is true or not, as they had a fear of death surrounded them. This is a proof that to have a suspicion of this sort is not the reason of a weak faith in God. Suspicion means that the person should not start to act according to the feelings. A faith is something on the basis of which a person acts. 
and suspicion is something, not only, a person does not act on, but gets worried, on having such a thought. Coming back to the story of Prophet Ibrahim, the Quran says, when Ibrahim felt a fear in his heart, the angel said to him, Do not get scared of us, we are not here to harm you. The God has sent us to destroy the people of Lut. When the angels saw Prophet Ibrahim in distressed situation because of the what is going to happen to the people of Lut, the angels told him that, We are the angels and we are sent by the God to give you good news of a son. The God will bless you with a son who will be a prophet. His name will be Isaac. After Isaac, your grandson will be born, whose name will be Jacob. Both of them will be prophets. When the wife of the prophet Ibrahim overheard this good news, she came out in front of angels, tapped her forehead in a surprised manner, and said while laughing, Oh my, will I conceive a child when I am so old, and so is my husband. The angel said, You are having a suspicion about a good news from the God. You have special blessings on your family. You are not an ordinary people. The reason the God was blessing Prophet Ibrahim was that he sacrificed everything for him. He left his family and migrated somewhere else. So if he would not have any children, then his generation would have ended from the face of the earth. The God said, Ibrahim left his family for me. So I will bless him with new family. The scholars narrates, Whatever a person sacrifices for God, he returns that to the person. But it is not always the case. Which means, if one will sacrifice his respect for God, the God makes him most respectful. The one who sacrifices the wealth for God, the God makes him most wealthy. Prophet Ibrahim left his family for God. The God gave him big family with numerous prophets in it. The Quran says, After hearing the good news, Prophet Ibrahim was a bit relaxed. And he started to argue with the God about the nation of the loot. Please note that the Quran used the word fight. Symbolically. Not literally. No one can fight with God. For example, when we say, I feel my heart is going to burst out of my chest. It does not mean that it is actually going to burst out. Prophet Ibrahim really wanted to save the nation of Lut. That is why he started to pray to God to forgive them and not to punish them. He was insisting in such a humble manner that Quran symbolized his prayer with a fight. The reason Prophet Ibrahim acted that way was because he was very tolerant and he was very soft-hearted. Prophet Ibrahim said, O oh my Lord, Prophet Lut is there too. The angel said, We know who is there. We will save Lut and his family, except his wife. The Quran says, O oh Ibrahim, your Lord has taken his decision, so do not insist to forgive them anymore. The important lesson for us is, let the God do his work. And we should do the work which has been given to us. We should be kind to everyone including disbelievers. Let the God repay them for their disbelief. The God said the nation of Lut will face a torment, like of which no one has ever seen. Then the angels went to the prophet Lut, in the shape of young men, as he did not know that they are angels. When he saw them, he got really worried. The Quran says the worry was apparent on his face. Though the prophets are very hospitable, but Prophet Lut was not glad to see them, because they came to him in the form of very attractive, handsome young men. And due to discomfort, Prophet Lut's hands started to get stiff, his heart felt really heavy, as if he has a great burden on his chest. He said, Today is a very difficult day for me. The reason he got worried is that he knew that when his nation will look at these attractive, young men, they will try to commit a sin. How will he show his face if something will happen to his guests? As taking care of guests was a great tradition. You and I cannot imagine the pudicity of the prophets. The wife of Prophet Lut informed the nation about the guests, that they are very attractive young men. The people of the nation ran towards the house of Prophet Lut because they were in an urge to commit a sin. 
When the prophet Lut saw the people outside his home, he said to them, This day is very difficult for me. These are my guests. Do not humiliate me in front of my guests. The nation said, We warned you ahead of time. You know we are like that. You should not have invited guests of this sort. The prophet Lut said, If you need to fulfill your desire, you should marry any girl of your choice from my nation, and do it in a legitimate way. Is there no one amongst you who could teach you that I am right? His nation replied, O Lut, you know that we do not have any interest in women. They did not even think for a minute that he is such a pious man, and in his old age they should not humiliate him. Prophet Lut said, I wish I would have had power today, or any one of you would have had stood beside me. When the angels saw that Prophet Lut is super worried and weak to his limit, the God ordered the angels to tell Prophet Lut, and they said, O Lut, we are the angels sent by your Lord. There is no way the people of your nation can reach you. The angels did not say that they cannot reach us, due to the fact that there was no question about it. And we are very powerful, so do not worry about us. What you need to do is, take your family members and all the believers, and leave this town in the darkness of the night. The God will not let them see you. Just take your family and leave. And remember, none of you should look back. But the angels knew that, when Prophet Lut will tell his family not to look back, they will obey him, as they believed in him. But his wife will look back for sure. When the torment of stones will come, one of the stone will hit her head and she will die because she is one of the disbelievers. When you will leave this town, the torment of the God will befall on them early morning, during sunrise. Prophet Lut was so tense that he started to look at the time, and got worried that his nation might attempt to hurt them right away. The angel said to him, O oh Lut, is not the sunrise near? The whole night passed in a fight between you and your nation. They said that to calm him down. The Quran says, When our command reached, we turned the whole land upside down. And then there was a shower of stones. Each stone had a mark on it, to hit the person that it is assigned to. The God says only he knew which stone was assigned to hit each person. Even the angels were unaware of that. Then the Quran says, O Prophet, tell the tyrants of the Mecca that the land of the nation of Lut is not far away from them. Because when the Arab people used to travel, they used to tell the stories of different nations to each other. And that was a part of the history. The conclusion from this story is, it is a responsibility of the parents, teachers and family members to protect their children from the early age and teach them to be aware of strangers or even from not immediate family members. Because they are human beings first and then they are a policeman, a doctor, a teacher, so on. And you, yourself, should be reserved too. Have limits. And because it is a psychological disorder, one should consult professional psychologists to cure themselves. May the Lord Almighty save all of us from these kinds of disorders and protect us all. Amin.